Quite frankly, this is a pretty challenging problem. We're given uh, two functions in polar coordinates, and then we're asked to reason about a series of things, both in terms of the polar coordinates, but also in terms of the x and y coordinates parametrized in terms of time. So, again, I'm the first to admit that there's a lot going on here, and let me see if I can help steer you through this. Here's the information I think you're going to find useful. Namely, we've got information about how you calculate area when you're working in polar coordinates, as well as how to convert polar coordinates into Cartesian coordinates. And then finally, just a reminder when we're working with uh, parametric equations, how to define the velocity. With that, let's jump into part A. A is about finding an area. And it looks like a kind of area between curves problem. This one, I think, is uh, particularly challenging to get a handle on, trying to find the area of this region. And what finally simplifies the situation is to realize that we're finding the area for the 4 minus 2 sine theta curve between theta equals phi, uh, pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. This slice right here. And then the rest of the uh, area is just the area of a circle through this slice here. Well, between pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6, that's one-third of a complete uh, circle. And so what they're really saying is take two-thirds the area of this blue circle and then add to it the wedge of area from pi over 6 to 5 pi over 6 of the second function, r equals 4 minus 2 sine theta. Let me just state that. Okay, The area in question is really 2 thirds of the area of a circle of radius 3. plus the area in this wedge where we have to consider the more complicated r equals 4 minus 2, third, 2 sine theta function. So I'm going to write it like this. We know that the formula for area is 1 half the radius squared d theta and this radius is 4 minus 2 sine theta. So that really is a mouthful, but now that we've broken it down, it's straightforward to calculate. So the area of a circle of radius 3, that's going to be 9 pi. <clears throat> Two-thirds of that will be 6 pi. And then this area we're going to have to evaluate numerically. So I've already programmed the one function, the 4 minus 2 sine theta, into the calculator. And let's do that calculation now. So again, y1 is the initial function that we've been given. Don't worry about these other functions yet until we get to those parts. But that's y1, and what we need to find is we need to use the numerical integration method and we're going to work from pi over 6 up to 5 pi over 6 
and our function is going to be that y1 function but squared and then it's going to be divided by 2 finally we're going to add 2 thirds of 9 pi to that and what is that? That's 6 pi. Again, quite a mouthful, but our answer is 24.7087. Okay, what's going on in Part B? In Part B, we're told that the particle is moving along this black path but the way it moves as a function of time is that the angle is t squared so as time goes forward it moves along this path but just how fast it moves along this path is determined by the fact that the square of the time somehow gives the angle in radians. And that means that we're going to have to substitute t squared in for theta in all of our formulas. Now, the specific question it asks us is to find when the x-coordinate of the particle's position is negative 1. So, uh, first of all, the x-coordinate this is our conversion between uh, polar coordinates and Cartesian coordinates so the x coordinate is x as a function of t equals r and in place of theta we're going to put t squared times the cosine and again in place of theta we're going to put t squared Okay. Okay. And so now we're asked when does that coordinate equal negative 1 for t between 1 and 2. And the endpoints are allowed. So I've gone ahead and programmed this into the calculator ahead of time so that we can find the intersection. And that's what I've displayed here in Y2 and Y3. We want the intersection. Notice that I've substituted for theta, I've substituted the T squared. And we want the intersection of that with the line Y equals negative 1. Uh, so I made my window go from X equals 1 to X equals 2, because they told us it was from T equals 1 to 2. And so now we can find that intersection. Here's the x-coordinate, taking its merry time. And then what should follow is the line um, equal to negative 1. There it is. OK? So that's what we want for our, our first curve. And that's what we want for our second curve. And our guess of 1.5 is as good as any. So there's our intersection point, 1.4279. So I'm just going to say evaluating numerically. T equals 1.4279. Now what is part C talking about? We have to find both the position vector in terms of time and then the velocity vector at a specific time. So the position vector
in Cartesian terms what we're looking for is um, just going to be x of t and y of t and again x is r of theta but I have to substitute in theta equals t squared cos theta same substitution and the y is r of theta sine theta so that's equal to uh, what do we got four minus two sine of t squared and then that whole thing has to be multiplied by cosine of t squared and then the other coordinate is the same thing 4 minus 2 sine t squared trying to squeeze this in times the um, sine of t squared So that's the first uh, aspect of it. And then the second is they want to know what the velocity is at a particular time. So the velocity is dx of t dt, uh, dy of t dt. And we're going to have to evaluate that numerically. at t equals 1.5. So again, I've programmed this ahead of time into the calculator. Take a look at what I've written for both y2 and for y4. y2 is going to be that x component as a function of t. y4 is that y component as a function of t. And I need to use the inderiv function. So I'll go to the catalog, get the inderiv. And I'm taking the derivative with respect to the one variable. And my uh, first function is a y2. And I'm going to take it at t equals 1.5. And my result, negative 8.0721. That's, of course, approximate. Now let's go back and grab the y component. Again, we have to do basically the same thing, except instead of y2, we need y4. negative 1.6729